Hello, you are watching Metamorphosis on Southland TV. I am elated to have with me here today Renee Oswald. Renee Oswald owns a hypnotherapy business called Your Mind Over Matter, but she also wears another hat right now as president of the Orland Park Area Chamber of Commerce. So welcome, Renee. It's good to have you here in our studio. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I want to chat with you first about you as a person, as a former mortgage banker turned hypnotherapist. How did that happen? Can you give me a little bit of history on that? Um, yes, so what I did is I started to go to this group and I don't even know how I got there, but I went to this group like all the way out in Villa Park and there was hypnotists, there was just people that did all these different um, kind of spiritual type things or you know, more things for your soul. And <clears throat> I started to talk to somebody that was a hypnotist and I said, oh my gosh, I've read all these books throughout my whole life about hypnosis. And I really, you know, self-hypnosis and, you know, the founder of hypnosis and where it came from and all that. And I said, and I've done that my whole life. So she said, well, why don't you go to school for it? And I went, oh no, no, I couldn't do that. And then the more I kept on going back to this group and talking to this girl, the more I decided, you know what, this is what I've always wanted to do. I've read about it, I, you know, I really want to do this. So then I went to school and got certified as a hypnotherapist, uh, but I still came back to the chamber and to different functions and still was a mortgage broker. And I did that for three years because I was not sure if I really wanted to do the hypnosis full-time or not. And then I decided, you know what, I really want to do this full-time. Not only that, I think people might be afraid that I would be hypnotizing them into doing mortgage loans. <laughs> so that was why I couldn't do both. So I, then, I, then I switched over. Did you notice that people had a different way of looking at you? For example, you're a mortgage banker by day and a hypnotherapist at night. Was it hard for people to adjust to that mindset? Um, it was because I didn't tell anybody for the first like two or three years. And I was just really, you know, friends and family were the people that I was, you know, were my clients. And when I finally said this at the chamber, yeah, I had like, you know, the people, the funny people saying, oh my gosh, don't look into her eyes. And I don't know if they really realized that I did a lot of training to become a hypnotherapist. It wasn't just like one day I'm a mortgage person, the next day I'm a hypnotherapist. I did a lot of training. I did a lot of, um, you know, like working with people, um, you know, like even during my training and then worked with people for the three years before I even, you know, like kind of came out of the hypnosis closet and, and <laughs> told people that this is what I was doing. So, yeah, it was a little bit of a transition, but I think once people realized that how serious I was about it, that um, they had seen a lot of hypnosis shows, and I think they kind of related that to what I was doing, where the shows are fun and they're, you know, they're a good laugh and they are real, but it, it is also real that hypnosis can really help you in making the change that you want to in your life. Can you give me an example of how that can help? Well, what I've helped people use it for. Well, I've helped many people with smoking, and it might seem like, oh, you know, smoking, but smoking is a big deal for people. You know, it's a real health thing. So I've helped many people to, and that's how I really became real interested in it too, because in 1992, I went to a hypnotist and quit smoking. Wow. Um, so, and I've worked with people for weight management. I've worked with um, all my nieces for biting their fingernails. But I've worked with people for success also. You know, that they, um, they had kind of like a little block there. They weren't sure about why they weren't moving forward and just gave them a lot more confidence so that they could succeed and, you know, do the things that they wanted to do. That's fascinating. So in terms of success and moving forward. Do you think a lot of people have a fear to take that leap of faith to go to a hypnotherapist in the first place? Yes. So this is what I know. When somebody comes to me, they really believe that they're that I can help them make changes, that I can steer them the right way. I always look at hypnosis as a path, that I'm starting a new path, um, kind of like a new like well I it's a neural pathway that we're starting a new neural pathway or I'm planting a seed and they still have to do the things that they need to do but a lot of times they don't know how to start this new path or plant the seed to start in the direction that they want to go in. That's fascinating. So it definitely takes a course of action as well and homework on their end but it sounds like they need to have that willingness to be open to it in the first place. Right, right. 
And so their belief sometimes is that they can't do something. So I can't quit smoking. I can't lose weight. I can't um, succeed. I can't move forward. So they've got that I can't, and that's a belief that they've got. And so with hypnosis, what I help them to do or support them is making those changes by changing that belief that I can do that. And so I think in anything, when somebody wants to make a change, it has to be that they believe that they can. And once they believe that they can, then, you know, then they can start to make the changes and move forward. It's a shift in negative self-talk to positive self-talk. Absolutely. And I always give them 100 affirmations, too. I have this sheet with 100 affirmations. I always send them away with that, so that always helps. And I always give them an action plan. So we, at the end of the hypnosis session, we always do like a three-point action plan of steps that they can take and things that they can do. And some of them might just be reading affirmations every day to help them along. I see a correlation between your business as a hypnotherapist and your action as president of the chamber, and that is that it's people-focused. Can you tell me a little bit about your presidency with the chamber? What made you decide that yes, that would be a good fit for you to be the president of the chamber? Um, I think it, I've been in the chamber for 10 years, and so I think it was a matter of kind of, you know, like stepping in the direction to be, you know, like be the president of the chamber. And so I think you, you do things gradually step by step. And um, yeah, I think that I can make a difference because I am positive, and I think a lot of people are negative. And I, and I always say that when people can see other people positive, that can bring them where they just want to be positive because, because they like to be around people who are positive. They like to be around people who know that they can succeed and move forward. And so I know that in the chamber, I can do that. You know, with the little steps that, that, we're, that we're taking in different directions of things that we're doing. You know, we might do something a little bit different. Um, I know I had started the Women's Networking event, and that was probably six or seven years ago. Um, and then I also um, started with the new membership orientation. So there are things that I did that I saw that the chamber, you know, could help the chamber. And now I, I think we're just always moving in that right direction, you know, to continue to make small changes or start a new event or do something a little bit different that gets people more engaged. Um, gets people more connected, and I think that's the big thing about the chamber is the connection with people. I have to say, in terms of the Women's Network, that was the very first event that I attended with the Orland Park Area Chamber of Commerce, and just to be around so many like-minded people in that we were all forward focused. I really appreciated that. I was interested to find out though that when you initiated, when you first proposed the idea of a women's luncheon, it was denied, was it not? It was. <laughs> it was denied and it was denied for a while and then I just kind of continued with it. So it was like I got more information, I wrote down more things of what I wanted to do, I had a step-by-step -step plan, I presented it at, um, you know, at different places um, I presented it to the um, to the ambassador group. I presented it to a couple other places, and when I presented it, people were going, "Oh, why do you want to have a women's club?" And after I continued to present it, then it was finally like, "Okay, well, let's just try it and see how this works." And the very first women's networking event that we had, there was a hundred people who attended, and each year it grew and it got bigger and bigger. We had two a year for a while. Um, and then we switched it to one a year because it's just it's just pretty big. And this year we had like 220 people who attended. We had um, Andre Andrea Darlis from WGN. She was our speaker. We've got lots of vendors and table sponsors. And I mean, it's just is a wonderful event. And women look forward to coming to that. Women who don't come to a lot of other things with the chamber come to that event. So it's a nice way to kind of you know see all these people that we don't really know a lot of times are chamber members who have businesses to run but they make sure they make that event. The, and that is fabulous. I really enjoy the ladies luncheon events and I want to talk for a moment about the chamber and some of the benefits of the chamber. Obviously we have more than just women in the chamber so let's talk about some of the benefits of chamber membership and maybe there's a small business owner out there watching this publication, this show, maybe um, maybe there's somebody who is just starting to dabble in their own business. What would you recommend would be a value add in terms of chamber membership? 
Yeah, I think that first of all, when people want to get out there and meet other businesses, it's kind of hard to say, well, I'm just going to go knock on doors and meet other businesses. So now when you're in the chamber, it's like you can meet other businesses at events. Um, you can see all the different businesses that are members of the chamber. And I believe now we have like 540 members. Um, and so you can come to the events. Um, it might just be a ribbon cutting that you'll come to an event and you'll meet somebody. Or you, as a small business owner, might want to have a ribbon cutting and, and have people come to your place of business and learn more about what you do and, and what you're about. So I think just calling the chamber office and seeing some of the things that can help them is like just, that's like your first step. You know, what can, what can the chamber do for me kind of a thing. Um, but just that networking, you know, and getting to know people and connecting with people. And that's something that I have found is that I've had a lot of friendships. I've connected with a lot of people. And the chamber is just more than just like a business to business thing. It's like a personal, a personal thing too where you make a lot of friends. Which makes sense because most of the business that happens doesn't happen in the boardroom. It happens on the golf course or through these relationships that are built. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's wonderful. And speaking of the golf course, then we have our big golf outing. Right. And that's always, I think it's the third Thursday of the month in June. And we have that every year. And it's always been very successful. Everyone's always very happy. And we always have wonderful weather because <laughs> I make sure that the weather is good. I'm in control of that. <laughs> How does that look? <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> One more question regarding shop local. I know that chamber members, what I've seen is that there is an emphasis on supporting other chamber members and, and keeping business local. Can you expand a little bit more on that and, and some of the importance of supporting other chamber members? Right. Um, that's one of the things. It's kind of like, okay, if you need a plumber, if you need um, a new bank, if you need, um, I mean, there's just... There's so many things in our daily life that we need. And instead of going outside of Orland Park or outside of the chamber, it's like you get to know these people. And you can look up. And you can know that you know, you're going to have a successful, I mean, it's going, to be, it's going to be a good relationship. And whatever you need, they're going to be able to provide it for you. And they're going to be accountable because they're chamber members. And they're going to want to do the best job for you. So even if you didn't get a lot of business, you just have that circle of people where you can, uh, you can tap into as a resource and you can get a lot of things done. Do you need a painter? Um, do you need your car fixed? I mean, there's just so many things. Do you need your computer fixed? I mean, we just have so many resources of people that we know that we can turn to, and we know that we're going to get, you know, we're going to get a good, good job for a reasonable price, and it's going to be a chamber member. Um, they're going to look to you now, and they're going to say, "Oh, and what, what do you do in your business?" So you do make those connections. So not only is it helpful for you in your household or in your business, because you might need some of those things done in your business, it's just going to be it's just going to be helpful and supportive for you, you know, like with a lot of different things. Now, do you have to be located in Orland Park to be a member of the chamber? You do not. Okay. So our title is actually Orland Park Area Chamber of Commerce. So no, we have a lot of businesses um, that are not directly in Orland Park. They might be in Payless, they might be in Tinley. I mean, we still, we even have a few that are in Chicago. So we have businesses that are in all the surrounding area. So the benefit is really more in the networking as opposed to the proximity. Absolutely, okay. yes, yes. I know that you've done, you, you've done a lot of research regarding the history of the chamber. Can you give us a little bit of trivia, if you would, on, sure. on the history of the chamber? Sure. So the chamber started with 14 members in 1958. So, and they got together because they wanted to be a resource for the businesses. Well, Orland Park wasn't very much of a business type community at the time. It was more of a farm community right. at that time. So then, um, naturally, it started to grow and um, continued to grow. Uh, and we had different locations for the, our actual chamber office. But then in 1986, it was uh, with School District 135 and with um, Ameritech and with the chamber that we got together. And there was a school building that was at 151st and 94th Avenue that was vacant, that was just sitting there, and they decided to move that, use that building. They were going to tear that building down. Mm -hmm. They decided to move that building to 151st and 88th Avenue. 
and put that there for the chamber office. They revamped the inside of the building and then we became, you know, the chamber right there. And we're on school property. And so that's a little bit of a history of the chamber. Now consider that we only had 14 members to start and now we're like at 540 and we're growing all the time. So we're going to continue to grow in our little schoolhouse, which is really, um, it's a quaint building, but it's also a very nice place and um, it's a great location. Wonderful. So just a little history of, yeah. No, I appreciate that. It's always fun to learn. What is your hope, your vision for the future of the chamber? Where do you see it trending? Um, well, my hope is to continue with the connections. Um, I think that that's a big, a big part of it, to continue with all those connections. Um, and naturally, to, you know, continue to grow. But the connections, when we make these connections, we find out what people want, what they want, want to hear more of, what they want to do more of. I mean, some of the things is that, you know, it would be nice to have more education, uh, more education programs. And we do have, you know, some of the schools that are um, in the area that can help us with some of those education programs. Uh, Robert Morris College is now a part of the chamber. Um, and so I think that it, it's a big thing to keep those connections going. It's a big thing to be able to offer to our, you know, businesses things that they want. They want to know more about customer service. So we're looking into, you know, like maybe a customer service program. Um, and the education is the big part, especially when we're dealing with a lot of smaller businesses because those smaller businesses have to have all the hats. So it's not just that they know a lot about computers. They have to know about marketing. They have to know about, you know, accounting. They have to know so many other things. And that's true of like all the small businesses that they can't just know their one thing. They have to know all the other things. And that's why they've got chamber members that they can go to to get those questions answered. But then we can also supply them with education to show them how those things can be done, you know, a little bit easier and take some things kind of off their plate so they're not like worried about those and they can concentrate on what they're good at. That's fantastic. I, I very much appreciate your time here and your input. I'm going to throw you under the bus for a quick second and just ask if you could give us an affirmation, the first thing that pops in your head in terms of an affirmation that you like to share with people. Oh. Um, I am is probably the best one because you can put anything behind that affirmation and when you just really stop and think about the I am, it's like, okay, you can kind of um, center yourself from that. You can um, kind of relax from that. You can take a few deep, deep breaths and say, I am. And then it's almost like, what is the first thing that pops into your mind? And, and own that. And own that I am. Um, you know, I am successful. I am a great person. I do the best. I am the best at everything that I attempt to do. Um, so you can put the I am and, and add those things to it and, yeah, and make yourself feel like really, really good about who you are and what you do. That is outstanding. I am grateful that you are here today. <laughs> and I am grateful that you asked me to be here today. <laughs> Thank you so much. Again, wrapping it up, Metamorphosis on Southland TV. Thank you. Thank you.